Hey guys, this is Andrew back with you for part two of my video series where I'm detailing how to induce mistakes from your opponents. Um, from those of you who haven't seen part one, it's not really required viewing because uh, none of the hands in, ha in uh, part one really determine my actions in part two, uh, apart from one or two specific instances. Uh, but the basic theme of this series is that I'm going through and detailing how you can induce mistakes from your opponents. Uh, in part two, I'm also detailing a couple of hands um, where I detail the importance of not making a mistake yourself. Uh, this is obviously really important because if we're going through and making up, making sure our op opponents are making um, the maximum mistakes uh, possible, we're just going to basically counter out that good work we're doing by uh, making mistakes ourselves if we're, if we're spewing off a bunch of money where we shouldn't be. So I'm going to be going over a couple of situations where you want to be playing a little bit more carefully um, and making sure that you don't fall into the trap of, uh, of making mistakes yourselves and we'll leave the mistakes to our opponents to make. Uh, so I'm just going to get straight into the hands and we'll get on with it. Okay, so the first hand on the list is a very simple hand which we can just play right through to the end and then just pause uh, once the blinds fold. Um, but it's a very simple hand where I raise 8-5 offsuit on the button and uh, get two folds in the blinds. Um, it may seem like it's almost useless to, um, to go over this hand, but I really want to drive home how powerful it is to blind steal against people who are non-observant um, in the small and big blind. You can, I mean, I'm playing, uh, if you look at my HUD stats uh, for this table, I'm playing 36-32 uh, over 47 hands. Um, this guy, Farpok, is, has only $6, um, so he should be basically re-raising and committing himself with a very wide range of hands because my button range is so weak. Um, and then Danpil here is 24-10. He's playing full stacked. He should be putting pressure on me because I'm so wide from the button. Uh, he should be re-raising me with a very wide range. Um, but the great benefit of people who um, are not good at poker or who don't understand um, who don't understand what a range is, or who don't understand how to read hands, or how to play post flop out of position, particularly out of position, that's quite a good point, uh, quite a key point, is that a lot of people just play really tightly in the blinds because they don't understand how to continue versus a wide range out of position. Now if they're going to make a mistake, um, if they're going to make a mistake versus me post flop, then I would recommend that they fold. But you can just see that if someone is only re-raising a range of sort of two or three percent, being you know jacks plus and ace king, and maybe the occasional like suited connector, it's just going to be so profitable um, to raise the button and steal the blinds. So I won't go on about this hand because uh, you know it's pretty basic. But you really, really need to be very uh, like uh, acutely aware of who the players directly to your left are and what their tendencies are because you'll really find that particularly at low stakes like 25 mm and 15 mm there are really players who are just playing too many tables not paying any attention and the money that you can make by uh, stealing the blinds is just absolutely phenomenal so I would really encourage you even if it's not something you normally do just try and raise every single hand on the button and see how uh, see how the blinds react you'll be astonished at how often you get a fold 